Okay, moving on to citrus and acid. I think the impetus for Lucas talking to me about doing this presentation was he was, he fried some, what was it? Yeah, so, so the story behind this, let me just get the mic for a second. So this, Pull it out of my so, shirt. So the story behind this is that, um, so we had a failure, we had an event, another potluck way back in May, in April, I think, and I made some, um, where were they, some fries. But Parsnip? They were, no, uh, some tuber. Um, the celery root fries. Yeah. And if you do them well, they really taste like fries. You put a lot of sugar on on them. And then Rachel came sugar. in. No, salt. not sugar, salt. And then Rachel came in and she was like, they're good, but I bet they would be good, better with a little bit of acid. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? And so I was kind of inspired to like to do something about like my food hacking because if you can make such a huge difference with such a tiny change, like putting a little bit of lemon on your fries, maybe I could kind of improve all of my meals. And that's how this talk came about. Yeah. Thanks. So what I was talking about there is just some like fresh herbal shot that the richness of the fries needed. Um, so, okay, so if you're, if you're working with intense fatty flavors in a dish, it really works well to brighten it at the very end. And I have some examples of how this plays out just in common stuff that you eat. Duck l'orange um, is a traditional French dish where duck, which is extremely fatty, is made with an orange sauce. So that kind of like citrus just really is a great complement to the extreme fattiness. Um, salmon with lemon and dill. So squeeze a lemon on, it just gives it something. So this is something to just keep in mind. Whenever you're, you're working with something that's super fatty and it might just taste mushy at the end, what can you do to just give it a little shot of spark at the end? Um, something that I struggle with if I'm making like a pork loin and I put cherries or pomegranate is I can just keep eating that fatty thing probably long past when you should be eating something that's so calorically dense. So fat sends a signal to your brain that you're satiated, yeah. And if you cut it with some citrus, it starts to taste so good and so fresh that you just keep eating it. So I have to worry like, you know, am I making my food taste too good, I would say. That's just something I keep in mind. <laughs> Um, yeah, oh, one thing I want, I'm not really going to talk about treats today, but uh, one thing that you can use citrus for in a paleo treat is if you're sweetening it with, it with dates and oranges, like orange juice, um, you're using that instead of your dairy as a wet, part of the wet mix. If you put zest in there, you're not putting any more sugar, but it amps up the orange flavor or the sweetness and it kind of like fakes more sweetness in the treat, I've noticed. Cinnamon is the same way. If you put cinnamon in something, um, like on a sweet potato, it just makes it seem more sweet. I think it's, it's just some side. Psychological trick. I think because you associate cinnamon with desserts or something like that. There's a thing for diabetics where uh, it's recommended that you put a little bit of cinnamon in your coffee because it incre increases your, decreases your insulin resistance. So there may be an actual science behind that actually tasting more sweet. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, this is just like an N equals one thing that I've noticed. Yeah. A lot of what I'm talking about right now is obvious stuff that you probably already implement, but I'm just trying to like catalog it and maybe give a jumping off point for experimentation or say at least something that you may not have thought of before.